That's about it for shaping, so let's move on to chaining. Right? Chaining is another way to produce new responses in a sense, or actually I shouldn't say new responses, but complex behavior. With chaining, we kind of looked with we kind of looked at this a little bit already, um, and your book has kind of hinted at it, but uh, we'll go over it in a little more detail here. It's basically it's a sequence of discriminative stimuli and responses. Right? So an SD leads to a response, leads to a reinforcer. Okay? So then we look at that next level. Each response is actually an SD for the next response. Okay? So think of driving your car. So there's all sorts of SDs that are, it's basically a big chain, so there's all sorts of things that are happening there. So you've got, you got to get your keys. Well, getting your keys is a discriminative stimulus for walking to the car. Walking to the car reinforces getting your keys and is also a discriminative stimulus for putting your keys in the door. Putting your keys in the door is a discriminative, or reinforces, you know, walking to the car, blah, 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 you see the idea here. Each response um, produces a, it is also a discriminative stimulus for the next response. Right? And then the consequences are the response themselves. So it, it basically is, it just cycles itself up here. right? And then you continue and you continue and continue. Eventually you're driving the car. right? So you think of all those little behaviors that you do when you're driving a car. Really it's just one big chain. You, know, you tend to look at your mirrors in one particular pattern most of the time. All right, left, right, middle, or right, middle, left, or middle, left, right, however you typically do it, it becomes a certain pattern. Every time you look in your driver's side mirror, you end up looking in your passenger side mirror. That is an example of a chain. Right? Ultimately, this leads uh, to one big reinforcer at the end of your chain, and that big reinforcer would be getting to your destination if you're thinking about a car. Right? So think of some examples, right? Um, Right off the bat, you know, I want you to think of something on your own, but the one that I'm thinking of, you put on your clothes is a chain. Cigarette smoking is a chain. Uh, you know, for me, believe it or not, lecturing is a chain. Right? Each stimulus is a, or each uh, line is a stimulus which produces a response. That response then cues me to talk about something else or come up with an example. That example then cues me to talk about the next thing and so on and so forth. Right? So there's all sorts of chains that are out there. So I want you guys to think of some of your own um, behaviors that may be chained. Right? Um, and again, look at your book while you're thinking about these things because there, there's some visual stimuli in your book that are useful to helping understand chains. Right? So let's look at a little bit of um, methods here with regard to chains. Okay, uh, Total task presentation. This is where the other thing that I failed to mention here and failed to put into slides uh, is something called a task analysis. It's actually on the next slide, but uh, task analysis is where you just list out all those different things that are involved in a complex behavior. Think about putting on your clothes. There's a big list of things to put on your pants. Okay, you got to get the pants out of the drawer. You got to step into one. You know, you got to put them down to where you can step into them properly, right? So, and you, but you don't step into both legs at the same time. You step into one, then you step into the other, then you pull them up, then you zip them up or button them up, and so on and so forth, right? So you do. You have to identify all those little steps before you can start using a chain. And now. Backward chaining is how is probably the easiest way to develop a chain a, a complex behavior. Right? So let's say we're talking about putting on pants. Now I'm going to use this regular old pair of Wranglers or whatever. They've got a zip front, not a button. Okay. So with backward chaining, what we're going to do is we're going to identify. Oh, I never even said anything about total task. Let me back up. Sorry about that. Uh, so total task chaining is where you present all of the tasks at once. Here's step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it leads to this, so go do it. This works really well with kids that are highly functioning, are not uh, developmentally disabled in any way. You know, they, they can follow instructions, they're verbal, that type of thing. So you say, okay, here's your list of, here's how you put on your clothes, go ahead and do it. All right, so you give them all those steps, say, here's what you need to do, and off they go. Um, hopefully that will get them in touch with the final reinforcer, which is having their clothes on correctly. Backward chaining works really well for people with mild disabilities, as does the next one, which is forward chaining. But um, it, it, this is used. This is backward chaining is probably the most successful out of all of, all of these, and it, it's really easy for the kids to learn when you use a backward chaining procedure. So backward chaining procedure, what you're going to do is let's think about all those steps that are involved in putting your pants on, right? 
And so getting them out, stepping into one leg, pulling it up a little bit, stepping into another leg, and then pulling it up a little bit, and then standing up and pulling them all the way up, right? So each one of these is a step, and then zipping your pants and then buttoning your pants, right? So there's a lot of steps that are involved. And there's arguably more steps in there as well in terms of how do you find them, which ones do you get out, you know, that type of thing. But we're not going to worry about that. So with backward chaining, we're going to take all the steps. And because we're teaching the person, we're going to do everything but the last step. And then we're going to have the kid do the last step. So we're gonna talk them through what we're doing, get the pants out, we're gonna pull them up for them, we're gonna zip them up, and then we're gonna have them do the button. Now the next trial, the next time we go to put pants on, we're gonna have them do the last two steps. And the next time, they'll do the last three steps, and so on and so forth. You're building that chain backwards. All right, so the, the reason this is very successful is it puts you in contact with the reinforcer immediately. Right? So, and we know about the immediacy of reinforcement and it makes it more effective. So think about the kid that's learning how to do the, the, the putting on their pants. Excuse me, I'll take a drink. Um, the kid that's learning how to put on their pants that doesn't know how to do it, when they're going to get a reinforcer just for buttoning the very last step. So they immediately get reinforced. Next time you're going to make them work a little harder. Okay? So you're buttoning and, and so now they have to zip and button. Right? Then they get a reinforcer. But right off the bat, you started with a reinforcer, and, and it was the natural reinforcer of having your pants on. And you had probably had some contrived ones in there, too, in terms of saying, oh, good job, you did it, yay, you know, all that stuff. Right? And then the idea is that you fade out your assistance as you go along. Right? And you may have to do some verbal prompts in there that you want to fade out, and so on and so forth. But the backward chaining works really well, and ultimately they, they, will, they will do it all themselves. Forward chaining is just the opposite. You have them do the first task and you do the remaining ones. Go get your pants. And then they go get their pants and you put them on for them. Next thing you say, go get your pants and put them on the floor. All right, so they get them ready to go. Okay, They get their pants and they get them ready to go. And then the next step is, all right, go get your pants and put them, you know, put them on the floor and then put one leg in. And they keep working through that. 